Hey guys, so one of the biggest excuses people have to discourage themselves actually from learning a language is not having time. For me, the biggest way that not having time impacts me is that my pronunciation is terrible. I sound robotic because I learned from a robot. I don't have the right inflections and stuff because I don't have time to sit there and watch a drama, which game shows have been my savior because I cannot stand living off in the middle of a drama. I can't like watch half of an episode and then come back to it later. It irritates me until I finish. I have to finish that episode. So I started watching game shows. There's this one game show, it's uh, South Korean Foreigners, I'll put the link in the description. Um, it has enough captioning that you can understand what's going on even if you can't understand what they're saying. Um, but it typically takes like three or four minutes to answer a question, sometimes less, and I've found that if I can watch them answer the question, I'm perfectly fine stopping it and going back to the next question. But as long as I can watch that question get answered, which doesn't take much time. So I'm a full-time working mom, and I honestly feel like it can be easier for a working mom to find time versus a non-working mom, but this completely comes up to how much you're willing to sacrifice. It's not a matter of making time, it's what you're willing to sacrifice to make that time. How badly do you want to learn this language? Like for the first year and a half that I was studying Korean, I didn't eat lunch. I had a choice between eating lunch or studying, and so I studied which is not healthy. Another non-healthy way of making time is sacrificing sleep. The healthy way to do this would be like go to bed an hour late or wake up an hour early. Just sacrifice one hour of your sleep to study. I sacrifice like four. I wouldn't go to bed till two or three in the morning and I would wake up at six. I would wake up at six, study for about an hour and then get up and get her ready for school. So like it was boom boom, she had to get out the door. Um, and then, yeah, she'd go to bed 9, 30, 10, and I'd stay up till like 2 or 3 studying. So that's not healthy. I sacrificed way too many hours. If I could do it again, I would probably just stay up an hour later. Another way when you don't have time is like, at least with my job, what helps me is that I spend a lot of time on hold, waiting to get a hold of nurses and doctors. So I would take like a list of words. And while I'm on hold, I would just sit there and go through the list until they answer. And then by the time they answer, I forget why I'm calling. And I would be like, oh, oh yeah. But, so that's another thing I did. And I would write grammar summaries. Like, if I was trying to study Umyeon grammar, I would write down used as if or when. And I would write an example sentence for when it's if. And an example sentence for when it means when. And I would just have brief grammar summaries like that. And I would review grammar like that. This is also where it can get discouraging though because people who literally have like no free time and they have to squeeze in studying whenever they can, they're going to progress slowly. So it can be discouraging to them to see someone who's only been studying for a few months and yet they're way more advanced than they are after a whole year of study, but it's not a race. At this point in your life, you know more Korean than you ever knew and the whole point of studying it is for fun and you're only competing with yourself. Do you know more than you knew last week, last month, last year? That's all you're looking at. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to learn the language. All that matters is that you're actually learning and remembering stuff. Eventually, you will reach a goal that you want, but it's not about how long it takes you to get there. All that matters is that you keep moving forward, and that's all you should focus on. You shouldn't compare yourself to someone else or be like, I expected to be here by now and I'm not. When you feel like that, look back at how much you've learned and you'll realize that you're doing good and you just need to keep going. So for me, I did make quite a bit of progress within the first year of my studies, but again, it's not healthy and I wouldn't recommend it. I sacrificed meals. I didn't eat lunch for a year and a half. I only ate one meal a day for a year and a half. I was only getting three to four hours of sleep for a year and a half. Like that's not good but that is how I was able to progress so quickly. And some people look at me as a full-time working mom and how quickly I progress and they're like, well, why can't I do that? And it's I'm not where I want to be. Like, my listening skills are pretty bad. They're getting a lot better since I started watching that game show. They've gotten a lot better. My pronunciations are a lot better, but they still need a ton of work. And I feel like I could be better if I had time to watch dramas and stuff. So that can get discouraging. So it's like, I could be better if... But you don't, so you can't 
look at that. You have to look at what you have and work with what you have. Wishing that you had more time, knowing how much better you could be if you could do this or that, that doesn't help you. All it does is waste your time stressing about it. So you just have to move past it and push on and just accept it like, okay, I'm not going to be good at speaking for like ever because I can't watch dramas, but that's okay because I can just work on my reading and writing and at least get better at that. Focus on what you can improve instead of stressing on what you can't. You don't have control over that, so quit stressing about it. Another thing that discourages people is they're like, well, what if I can't understand K-pop songs or I'll never be able to understand dramas. Um, I may never go to Korea. For that third one, you never know if an opportunity will ever come up for you. So if it does come up, you're one step ahead by studying. Don't make K-pop songs your goal because K-pop lyrics can be just as nonsensical as English lyrics. They use bad grammar, they use outdated grammar, they use grammar that's specific to songs only that you would never use in spoken Korean. So don't make K-pop your goal. You are you may never understand K-pop and that's okay. And dramas on the other hand, okay so when I was studying Spanish, like we would watch movies and stuff and I could barely keep up with the dialogue. But then when I got out of school and stuff and I worked at Walmart, people would constantly try to talk to me just to see if I could and I could communicate with these people. Like when you're speaking face to face, for one you have context, for two you can ask them to repeat if you don't understand, and if you don't understand they can rephrase it for you and tell it to you in a whole different way. So like it's a lot easier communicating in person than it is to try following a dialogue in a movie. So just because you can't follow follow along with a movie dialogue doesn't mean you're not going to be able to follow along in a real life conversation. Another reason you can't compa compare yourself to other people is you don't know their stories. They could be willing to sacrifice a lot more than you. Like, within the past year I've learned enough that I started doing stuff for fun again, but for the first like two years of my study, I didn't watch any shows in English, I didn't listen to any songs in English, I quit hula hooping, I didn't do literally anything for fun. If I had a second to do something for fun, whether it be scrolling through Facebook or Instagramming or watching YouTube videos, I don't care. I studied. I didn't do any leisure. I, I had no leisure. And studying isn't leisure because that can be stressful. So like literally every spare second I had was spent studying. I didn't do anything else whatsoever. I even skipped eating at times. I skipped sleeping at times. So like you can't compare yourself to other people because you don't know how much free time do they have. People's brains are just different. Some people just absorb languages more easily than others. Some people grew up learning two languages, so when they go to pick up their third, it's way easier. If you're not learning a second language till way later in your life, it's going to be more difficult for you than people who were younger. I mean, just everyone has all these different things that can make it either easier or harder for them, and you don't know their stories, so you can't say... I should be where this person is. You can't compare yourself to others. So I guess that's it basically. You do have the time. It's just a matter of how much you're willing to sacrifice to make that time. Like I personally would recommend just maybe an hour of your sleep. I would not lose any more than that. But if that's literally the only time you have, you got to think you're only studying for an hour a day. But you're either tired or just waking up. So it's not going to be as productive as the hour that other people have to spend. But that does give you some time, and it'll be slow, it will, but you will learn the language. So it just depends on how motivated you are, really, to learn the language. So it's not about speed, it's about proficiency. So just spend that hour wisely, and you'll learn the language eventually. And that's really all that matters. You don't have to learn it fast, that's not your goal. So just keep at it.